given to us and I hope today that your heart is alive with his presence and that you are just finding joy in the Lord and all that he's done. Uh, our scripture this morning uh, comes from Luke, the 19th chapter, should be no surprise, uh, being Palm Sunday. Uh, I'll be reading verses 28 through 30, and uh, we're going to hear the word of the Lord together as we relive the entrance of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. Luke 19, 28 through 30. And after he had said these things, he was going on ahead, ascending to Jerusalem. And it came about that when he approached Bethpage of Bethany, and Bethany near the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, in which, you, in which as you enter you will find a colt tied, on which no one has yet ever sat, untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it, thus shall you speak. The Lord has need of it. And those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and they threw their garments on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he was going, they were spreading their garments in the road. And as he was now approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered and said, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. And when he approached, he saw the city and wept over it saying, if you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. For the day shall come upon you when your enemies will throw up a bank before you and surround you and hem you in on every side and will level you to the ground and your children within you and they will not leave in, in you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, and I pray now that as I bring forth your message to your people, that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, that the words I speak, the meditation of my heart, would be that of yours to your people, and that they would hear your voice in this time and in this hour, that we may all understand the beauty of your love for us. And we ask it now in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. I wonder today as, as we gather together, have you yourself ever been on a journey so memorable that you have just absolutely never forgotten? It's just something that is ingrained in your mind this time that you took this journey to somewhere, wherever it may have been, but it was just so memorable that it just lives in your heart today and it lives in your very soul. A journey which at different times, the memory of it comes rushing back and it's as real as if you were on that very journey today. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That something will happen, you'll hear something or a song will play on the radio or someone in your family mentions something and all of a sudden you're on that journey again and you're back uh, taking that journey that has moved your heart in such a special way. Um, I, I remember as a young boy growing up that, uh, and I don't, it's kind of odd, I don't have a whole lot of memories past a certain age. I don't know if I just am losing it or what, but when I, but I, I have this one memory that I have when I was a real young boy, and I never will forget it. Uh, it's, it's just ingrained in my mind and my heart 
I got to go on a train from Birmingham, Alabama to Pascagoula, Mississippi with my family and we slept on the car. You know, they used to have those sleeper cars on trains. And I slept, and I can remember today the sound of the, of the train and it's rumbling down the track. I can remember that they had a little bed thing, a little coach where the curtain where it spreads out and you, and you got to sleep on the train. And I was just so little. And I wonder sometimes, out of all the things that I did when I was a little kid, not, I, don't, I haven't forgotten everything, but why that stuck in my mind so much? But, I, but it's like sometimes I'll hear a train going down the track and, and my mind all of a sudden is back to being a little boy on that sleeper car. And, and I remember being with my family and my parents and how wonderful that was. And, and it's just a journey that I took that has really meant something to me my whole life. Uh, another memory that I have in my life uh, as a, a, a young man in, in my uh, late teens, uh, as 19 years old, I, I remember when, when I left to go to uh, overseas, to Vietnam, I, I remember that journey I took. I can remember as if it were today boarding a bus at Camp Pendleton and driving to the Lo uh, Los Angeles International Airport and boarding this plane. It was a commercial plane. And as that plane took off, I had a window seat. And I remember just dead silence on the plane. Nobody was saying a word. And we were all sitting there, and I was looking at the window, and, and we uh, taxied out, and we took off on the plane. And I remember I, I was just fixated on California, on the coastline. And I can remember, as a 19-year-old boy, just watching the United States that coastline grows smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller till it was the size of a pin and then it was just water and gone. I can remember that just as if I were on that plane today. I mean, it was a journey I will never, ever, ever forget in my entire life. Point is, in our life, we take all kinds of journeys, folks. Some we forget as quickly as we take them. Some of them stay with us forever. Some of them change our lives forever. Some impact our lives in such a powerful way, we will never, ever forget it, ever. These journeys can be positive in nature. They can be negative in nature. Sometimes we remember those not-so-fun journeys or pleasant journeys that have impacted our life. But the one thing they all have in common is they are unforgettable. They live with us in our mind and our heart our entire life that we live in this world. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday which begins the most wonderful week, in my opinion, of the whole year. Easter week is a powerful time in the life of every Christian. It should move us in some way. And it concludes the journey of Jesus. He arrives at the place that he knew he was going to have to go before God's plan was even known by the human race. Before there was even the human race, this plan was understood and known. This journey was going to have to be made by God. We know that. We read about his journey which began at his birth, which really took off when he came to the Jordan River and John baptized him. And his ministry began. And for the next three years, he, his journey was from his, baptism, his birth, his baptism, to Jerusalem and the cross. He was on a journey. He was on a journey. It was revealed to his disciples Shortly after Peter proclaimed him to be the Messiah, Lord, who do they say that you are, that I am? You're the Son of God, the Messiah. And then we're told in Matthew 16, 21, from that time, 
Jesus Christ began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. He told his disciples, we're on a journey and we're heading to Jerusalem and there will be nothing that can stop us. Our scripture tells us of his arrival. We refer to it as what? What are we? The triumphal entry. We refer to it as that because it was the triumphal conclusion of a lifelong journey that Jesus was taking on our behalf. Today I just want us to consider his journey and his triumphal entry. I believe when we do, we will think to ourselves, wow, what a journey. What a journey. What a journey. It's changed everything for us. And let me say that every journey we take in life begins with a need and a purpose. When I traveled on that train, I was going to see my cousin, Bill and Beth, both of them. Bill is actually teaching medicine up in Johnson City right now. And Beth, I don't have a clue where she's at. (laughs) But I used to love going there. But that, you know, we were going, we had a purpose. We got on that train, we were going to see family. We were going to see family, and I was excited about that. When I left for Vietnam, it was to comply with orders that I had received and to live up to an oath that I had taken when I joined. I had purpose and reason for getting on that plane. Every journey we take begins with a need or a purpose. And that was certainly true for Jesus, especially. His purpose for going to Jerusalem had at its root the most noble of reasons to go, and that was unfailing love for somebody. He took that journey because he loved us. His reason and purpose for leaving heaven and coming into this world was his unfailing love for the human race and for humankind. John 15, verse 13, greater love has no one than this than one lay down his life for his friends. His love brought him into this world to lay his life down for his friends. That would be us. He further explains his purpose when he tells his followers in Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. He came and took the journey from the Jordan to Jerusalem to suffer death for us. His journey, for lack of a better expression, was a rescue mission. He had to come. It was prompted by an unexplainable love that God has For you and me. That is the most mysterious question. That is the most mysterious thing to me in the entire world. Is why God would do what he did for me. Or for you. I don't get it. I never have understood why the God of heaven who can create anything by the spoken word can make anything happen, anything exists, put the stars in the sky, the moon up there, the solar systems, the galaxies, planet Earth, all that stuff, create everything. Why, why would he do that for me? Why would he give up heaven, be born as a human child in this world, and live a life in this world being a suffering, feeling a pain, hunger, thirst, being ridiculed, 
being despised and on top of that, being rejected by the very people he came to die for and live. Why would God do that? It just blows my mind. I do not get it. I do not understand it. When we consider the God of everything is our God by choice. His power, his might. Mm. But God knew without him coming and doing what he had to do, we would be lost forever, friends. We would have no hope of redemption. No hope of knowing God as Father. We would be lost and destroyed by sin. God's love for whatever reason was greater for us than God's self-love. And he came. Wow. I don't know. I just don't know. As I said, he's an awesome God, folks. He is an awesome God. But in addition to purpose, every journey also has the actual journey itself. The train ride. Wow. The train ride. 